Hi folks, I'm going to be starting real soon, but uh, just something for you to think about before I do get going is this little plane. And if anyone wants to do a little bit of research on it, it's uh, stamped Fields of Nottingham. So if anyone wants to find out any information on that, much appreciated. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Well, hi everyone, and thanks to Shrenik, who's going to be moderating in the chat tonight. Good evening, Shrenik. Good evening, everyone. So, let's get cracking on. Uh, now, this was going to be all about planes, a bit of plane talking, and um, I hope to get a lot more done before this evening so I could show you a bit more, but uh, I've had troubles with my thumbs the last few days, so I haven't got that much done. Uh, but I'll show you what I've done on this number three, and then I'll talk about the, um, the wooden plane that I hope to be making over the next week or so. So, let's head over to uh, the number three. Now, last time I was uh, talking about this one, you would have seen it all in one piece, and then I stripped it down, and you saw how filthy it was. Well, I've had a bit of a go at cleaning some of the bits and uh, actually it was very, very nice. It worked out quite nicely. And although I won't be shooting with it, I checked it before I started and it was virtually perfect. And having done what I've done, it still is virtually perfect at uh, the sides to the sole uh, by way of being square and the sole being flat. So, very pleased with that. So this is what I did today, and I was going to show you the rushes of the video I was making a bit, but uh, for some reason I can't get that to, to go to the stream properly this evening. So I'll just talk you through what I've done. Stripped it down again, and if you remember, it was really filthy, so I gave it a good old clean. Used some white spirits to begin with in the workshop, and then I went outside and used a bit of petrol, uh, because I've, I figured out that uh, my paraffin, which I was going to use, is uh, stored after reorganising the garage right at the bottom of some shelves, right behind lots of other tools. So I, I left that in there for the time being. But the petrol did a pretty good job. It's left the uh, Japani, which is the, the interior paint, uh, all intact. It was very smelly though, so I do prefer the smell of paraffin to petrol. I cleaned off the frog and uh, Brushed out the, the threads with some WD-40, clean those up a bit. I didn't take the lateral adjuster off uh, because I checked the, uh, the front of the frog with the uh, straight edge, diagonals, etc. And it was all uh, nice and flat, so I just got the, the rust off that, cleaned it up a bit. But I did take out the yoke. And I said I probably wouldn't, but I, I gave the pin just a little push and the, the pin came out nice and easily, so I took the yoke out. And that's always something to try uh, if you do need to do a lot of work on the, on the frog. If you take that yoke out, it makes it a little bit easier. Even with the lateral adjuster in, you can get to virtually the whole surface all at one go. So that's the frog sorted, uh, apart from mating surfaces, and I'll be doing those, that'll be one of the next things I do, to mate those to the plane, if there's any problem, and there may well not be. The, the main plane body, I actually used um, a scraper. I used this piece of cobalt steel, which used to be a, a large planer knife, and scratched all the rust off to begin with and then scraped back to a pretty good finish. I haven't gone for a, a perfect finish, gone for something that looks its age but looks as if it's been looked after. And then having done that, the sole as well, and just gave it a quick buff with some auto sole. So that's really lovely now. I want to broke all the corners so it's got no sharp corners on it anywhere which is always something, if you're using a smoother, you don't want to have a sharp corner anywhere, which might catch on the work and, and ruin all the lovely job you're doing of smoothing it. The uh, lever cap, 
If you remember, that was rather badly pitted and rusted. Um, scraped off all the rust, back to just the, uh, the chrome surface on there, gave that a polish, and now that's looking not too bad. Everything that I'm doing here is going to look its age, I think, but uh, rather than going too far with it. Same with some of the screws, just gave them a bit of a clean up. And the brass work, so the brass nut for the, I think that was the top of the, the handle, rear handle or tote. Let's clean that up. The front one, you'll remember, was too tight on the thread, I just couldn't get it off. I soaked that in lots of WD-40, that still won't come off, so I'll keep feeding that with a little bit more. And hopefully by next time I'll have got that off. But I've given it a bit of a clean anyway. The handles I've done nothing with. What I'm going to do is scrape the finish off these because most of it's missing already. So I'll just scratch that off, give it a very light sand and uh, put a new finish on there. Still not sure whether I'm going to use them on this plane though. Uh, what else? Oh, the spin wheel. That came up nicely. Bit of water sole and a fair bit of work. And the blade just started scraping a bit of the, the rust off and uh, we'll get on to that next time. So a little bit of progress on that. Still got in mind that somebody wants it pink, somebody wants it purple. So if there are any votes this evening, anyone wants to pledge anything for a particular colour, then uh, please do. And let's take a little look at the next plane I'm hoping to make. I pledge um, purple or hot pink. I think I already played this one before. Uh, but uh, Dr. Crazy is asking if you tried vinegar. Uh, I haven't done on this on this plane. Uh, I've used various acids in the past with different success. Uh, but I can't remember, because it's such a long time ago, how I got on with, with white vinegar. So if you'd like to say, Dr. Crazy, just stick something in the, in the comments as to how good it is or bad it is, that'd be interesting. So the plane I'm thinking of doing here, I don't know if you can see that plan, it's just a, an idea for a scrub plane, which I came up with. Uh, loosely based part of it, on a jack plane, which I saw on Bench Talk 101, which, and I can't remember who it was, had made a replica of. I expect Shrenic can remember that one, the Roman plane. So, came up with. Roman plane replica that was made by Richard Hughes. Richard Hughes, okie doke. So, I came up with the idea of the, the handle, which can be used sideways like this rather than like that. So that's the idea for it. Uh, I've got some what I was told was marble wood um, from Africa. It doesn't match with any marble wood that uh, I can find in any database or book that I've got. So I'm not quite sure what it actually is. But it's very hard, very heavy. I was thinking of making the sides out of that. And I've got a piece of beach. Possibly not quite long enough to make the middle of the plane. So this is going to be one of those laminated ones. So we cut the, uh, the front and the, the heel out of the one piece and then we laminate on the side a couple of pieces like so to tie it all together. A bit like the shoulder plane I made. Mitch, um, sorry about the delay. Ah, oh, for loosening things. Okay, do Well, that's useful. If I can't uh, take that off in the morning when it will have had about four doses of WD-40, I'll, uh, I'll try some vinegar on it. Thank you very much for that. Are you using normal WD-40? Uh, I am. So, if you use a penetrating oil, because WD-40 isn't really a deep penetrating oil, WD-40 do sell 
any penetrating oil. And that, that will actually penetrate into it and actually get through all the, you know, get through the threads and penetrate so it loosens up. Normal WB40 won't get through just as quite as well. It might do, but it will take a lot longer. Uh, if you don't. Yeah, this is the this is the one I've always used to be honest. And I did notice recently they've come out with a with a new one to stop squeaks. So maybe they're expanding their range. But uh, we'll see. Uh, happy to try the vinegar because uh, that'd be an excellent one to find out about. Back to this plane. Uh, the plane iron is going to be made from an old tire iron. So it's a bit of tool steel. I did grind it, grind test on it, uh, when I was doing another video, not quite sure what that was, uh, but proved that that's very high carbon steel. So that should be fine, it's nice and thick as well, it's probably uh, four mil thick. Maybe slightly on the narrow side for a scrub plane, just over an inch, but uh, anyway, we'll have a go. Got a nice piece of brass, half round bar, to make um, a swinging bridge. I think that's the right name for it. And I've got a steel pin uh, to help with that or to make just a, a normal bridge pin. So that's gonna be the next plane. Um, as long as things go all right in the next few days, I'll start cutting some parts out, uh, maybe take a video of that that I can show the next live stream and then perhaps get to gluing it up uh, actually live with you. After that, I think I was challenged to make a mitre plane out of wood. No, you were challenged to make one out of metal. Oh, metal as well. Oh yeah, I know about the metal one, but actually during the last live stream, I think it was mentioned a wooden one. Is that not right? Oh, okay. Um, somebody said mitre plane, and I said oh, I didn't really want to get into a lot of metal work in the live stream. And uh, the suggestion was do it in wood. So a wooden mitre plane and a metal one as well, because I've been challenged by Shrinik to make a metal one. So I, I think we'll get on and do both of those eventually. <laughs> So, anything happening in the chat? Heat it up with a blowtorch. That's obviously for loosening the nut. Ruin all the polishing work that I did to the, to the brass. But it might give it some nice coloration actually, heating it up. Seems to be a lot of tool talk going on in the chat as well. So, hope you've been having... Yeah, I've been talking a, a lot about um, Peter's uh, 712 skew rebate play. Ah. They're, they're very rare, um, but they're also not commonly sought after because people don't know about them. Oh, I see. Very interesting. So, we've got the no colours um, apart from purple and pink for the number three. Uh, no comments on the whether I'm using marble wood and beach for this plane, whether that's a good idea. I do have some lemon wood uh, that's set aside for plane making. Uh, again, another dense and uh, hard wood. So that's going to be used either in this one or something, uh, something else, another plane. And, uh, well, it looks as if planes are going to play a, a quite, a, quite a part in the live streams for the next uh, couple of weeks or so. Now, I did mention that I would be making um, a rack for my saws to hang on the wall behind me next to my other tool rack. Oh, tool chest, tool cupboard. Um, not quite sure about that now because... I looked at the measurements and I would not be able to open the doors of that tool cabinet uh, if I had saws hanging up right next to it. So that's going to have to go somewhere else. But I still want to do that. I have got some pine 
uh, to knock up um, carcass for that and some dowels uh, to hang the actual saws or oh, we'll balance the saw handles on but I haven't come up with a design I've seen plenty uh, but as you know I tend to like to do things my own way so I'll be trying to design something a little bit different hopefully very compact as well I do have a, a quite a few saws and it'd be nice to get them all together in a small space uh, and hanging up out of the way. Now that does mean that I've got some space on the wall next to my existing cabinet uh, which could take something a little bit narrower so it goes behind the doors. Uh, if I move over this way or this way, not quite sure, you'll see that there is some cleats on the wall, uh, French cleats so um, they would be the ideal place to hang one or two other small cupboards. And I'm going to decide what they're going to be for. I'd like to use the main tool cabinet for my planes that I use regularly. And uh, it at the moment has got some things in there which could move out. So I've got my router planes. They could go in a different cupboard. I've got scrapers in there. Let's just remind myself, um, some spare blades, so yeah I could get another couple of planes in there if I got rid of some of the other rubbish uh, and put that in another cupboard. So I'm thinking of a slim cupboard for spoke shaves because I've probably got half a dozen or so of those and then uh, maybe something for the router plane if I can get it to sit uh, a little bit closer to the wall. So anything that's not too deep should be able to go in those cupboards. And uh, that might be something else to do in the live stream as well. Just, just make another one. Yeah, just keep making cabinets and putting all the tools. <laughs> yes, but I'd like to get another plane in that one. I'd like to have my planes together. And I definitely want to get my spoke shaves out of the drawer that they're currently in. And it'd be nice to have them up in a little cupboard. Just hang them on the, just hang them, hang them on the doors on the outside of your cupboard. On the outside of it? I, uh, I'd like to be able to shut them away so they're, they're hidden. Paul says he likes petrol. <laughs> Paul's coming in a bit late on that one. <laughs> I don't think he's a bit late, I think the timing, so because there's a lag, isn't there? Oh. The, um, the petrol was actually very old, it's from the lawnmower from last season, so. I had to use it up because it, it certainly won't run the lawnmower very well. So anyway, it looks like it's going to be um, some cabinets, probably small ones for slightly smaller tools, edge tools. And uh, then the rack for the saws will go somewhere else. Uh, whether it will be behind me as I sit here, I'm not quite sure. But um, I'll be building it, so if you're, if you're waiting for that, it will be coming along. I may be really um, radical and use some power tools in that. <laughs> it's just a case of the initial roughing out of stuff. To, uh, to rough size and then I'll finish everything else off by hand. Whether it's the cold weather, it could well be the cold weather actually that wasn't helping my my hands last week. Uh, hopes that hopefully this warmer weather this week might see things improve. So that's what's coming. 
Um, that's about all I've got to tell you, unless any of you are having problems with uh, inkjet printers. I had an inkjet printer that just would not print colours properly. I found out what colour was wrong, and uh, you might be able to see here. I just hold that up. I printed, um, now I can't remember what it was now, but uh, cyan, green, no, cyan, magenta, and what's the other one? Anyway, I printed yellow. Yeah, yellow, that's right. So it should have been cyan, yellow, magenta, red, green, and blue. And as you can see, the yellow wasn't working. And I did everything that I could find out to try and cure that. And uh, nothing happened. Then I had the brilliant idea of let's stick the cartridge in the microwave. And thankfully before I got to the microwave I thought oh well, actually there's an electronic circuit on the cartridge. That's probably not a good idea. So instead I wrapped it up in uh, a Ziploc bag and poured boiling water over it and left it to sit in boiling water for about, well it wasn't boiling water for an hour, but until it had cooled down. And then miraculously I get yellow. Perfect printing. Um, so there you go, a little tip for you. Nothing to do with woodworking. Well folks, that's it from me. As I say, I'm sorry it's been a bit um, lacking in content tonight. It's one of those things, if I, if I can't use my hands, then uh, it's difficult to do stuff. But hopefully talking about a few things and showing you what I have managed to do would have been of interest. So thank you all for turning up. And uh, I shall see you hopefully on Monday. Uh, just watch out if you're not subscribed and you want to catch the next one do subscribe and uh, click for all notifications and then you'll hear when the next live stream is. Hold up Mitch, um, one second, I think we've got one question which is what camera are you using? What camera? At the moment I'm using the laptop uh, webcam which is pretty grainy I think. Um, when I'm on, let's pop over to that one, that's an external webcam which is just a cheap model because I couldn't get one because of uh, I was going to get a Logitech one but I couldn't get one because they were all sold out until March when I was looking for one back in November I think this one here is a Sony camcorder that's an AX33 and that's another Oh sorry, that's the wrong way around. That's the AX33, that's the Sony, and that's a PJ10 I think, or PJ30. <laughs> Dr. Crazy says don't use the laptop camera please. No, well, it's much easier for me just to do this talk with you. You don't need to see my, my face too clearly, I don't think, do you? Um, but when I'm actually doing some action then I'll use one of the camcorders because they give uh, pretty good pictures I think. And I've also got a problem I can see there with some light coming in from above so I have to get the, the lighting sorted out a little bit better. A Sony Alpha 5100, is that a, a DSLR? Dr. Crazy? Any plans to show how to do joinery? I hope, is that towards me? I hope so. Yes, I will be. I, I did say about doing some joints, so but nobody's actually requested uh, any joints uh, recently. But yeah, I'll be doing some joinery on here. Mitch, just a little, uh, I guess, design change on your scrub plane. How about you, uh, you dovetail the 
soul onto the scrub plane. Duff. Sliding dovetail. Yeah, I could do. I, I would probably do it um, wedged, tapered. Okay. Uh, and what would you suggest would I use for that? Uh, what are you making the main um, plane out of? The sides out of marble wood and yeah. the, the central section from uh, beach. Oh. oh, I'm trying to think if I've got anything really good for a soul. I don't have any lignum vitae. I don't have enough boxwood. But uh, if you look at the, the European scrub planes, which are wooden, they tend to have um, beach soles, I think. They go for a beach sole. So a beach sole with a beach central section and marble wood sides. Yeah, the dovetail on sole. Dovetail on sole, yeah. Okay, why not? Let's try that. Always happy to oblige. Like a challenge, don't you? Well, you've just made it um, probably three times as. <laughs> difficult or Sorry. not not difficult but as take three times as long to do it <laughs> it might be fun who knows so that'd be a little bit of joinery that I could do uh, on the live stream I'm not sure what Paul referred to he said mahogany hunter with a question mark um, I can't think that's good for a plane, particularly. Maybe that was for the, the cabinets I'm making. Because he, the, the petrol was quite a, a late comment. I think he's maybe 10 minutes behind us. I think so. <laughs> um, Lego Man says you should try and make a one piece plane. Yes. Okay, let's stick that on the list. I hope somebody's keeping a list. I think that's how you make your mitre plane. When you do your, mitre, your wooden mitre plane, you do it as a one piece and you do it traditionally. Do I? <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> <laughs> um, certainly, if I make a copy of that little plane I showed you at the beginning, which I, I don't know if the comments come in on what, what the... Uh, the heritage of that is, but if I make a copy of that, that is a one piece. So maybe I'll make a copy of that. Just one piece of beach. You should be getting details of that plane maker by, by the morning according to Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. So yeah, I might make a copy of this, it's quite nice. I might make a smaller one though, because this is quite large. So do you think a smaller... I guess you'd call it a rebate plane. It says... I think you should make a real miniature one. I think um, this... You should make it out of boxwood. I think this was a, a small uh, coffin smoother that somebody's actually uh, modified. So, uh, hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and when I make my uh, my mate my mitre plane, my mitre plane, <coughs> it could be a miniature as well. I've never seen a miniature wooden mitre plane. That would be interesting. Uh, I'm not sure I can make it small enough to centre Barbie. <laughs> but uh, there's a, there's a challenge for me, isn't it? It used to be easier to get an iron for a, a miniature one. I just find an old hacksaw blade. Just as you're leaving, the questions keep coming in. Did your uh, 20, your twenty eight dollar workbench is it from twenty eighteen? Is it still alive? It is. It's brilliant. Love it. Um, it wasn't twenty eight dollars in the end. It worked out to be 
somewhere between I think 15 and 18 uh, oh actually 28 dollars it might be dollars 15 and 18 pounds I think it was which I think is about 28 dollars ish yeah probably a bit well, yeah I think at the time it was certainly cheaper than I was suggesting in the titles <clears throat> it's still alive it's still nice and sound I use it regularly I did stick a uh, record 52 and a half vice on it just because it's a little bit quicker to use well a lot quicker because it's a quick release on it uh, but yeah it stood up really well and well chuffed with it and if anyone's only got that, that amount of money to spend on a workbench then uh, I'd definitely say try that another, another question which I missed uh, was do you plan to stream on Twitch because there aren't many woodworkers on there and you might get a lot more visitors there uh, I'll show my ignorance. I've heard the name Twitch. I've absolutely no idea what it is. It's, uh, it's another streaming site. You can stream in a lot higher quality. Uh, there's a lot less lag as well. And uh, it's mostly used for gaming. So people stream their gaming on there. Uh, I think music is starting to grow on there. Ah. As well. yeah. But I don't think there is any... There aren't any woodworkers that I know of that should stream on Twitch. And I don't know if you'll have that market then, if you see what I mean. Well, I'm, uh, I'm open to give it a go and see what happens. If everyone here wants to come along and watch it on there, we can try it one time and see what happens. Dr. Crazy is offering to help you with Twitch if you need help. Fantastic. Are, are you um, a friend on Facebook? Because if you are, message me and we'll try and get something sorted out because I'd uh, certainly appreciate some help. If you're not on Facebook or anything like that, uh, you can email me from my website, onemadeof.co.uk. I wonder if I can stream to both at the same time. Very possibly. Email works. Oh, excellent. Well, yes, yeah, send me an email. Let me actually, I can give you a mail address you can use in the chat if I can work out how to put it in there. Uh, Just type it in. Do, do, do. Yep, drop me a, a line there and uh, excellent, we'll give it a go. Ah, oh, do them both at the same time. That would be uh, astounding if it works. Uh, as long as OBS can do it, otherwise, I think you might have to use Streamlabs, which I think can do it. Okay. Well, I can always record one and uh, send it out and chat over it. We'll, we'll sort out something. I've yet to get my, um, what did I say, 15, 20 meter Ethernet cable. But uh, maybe I should get one of those as well. That's good. When I was uh, the, the pre um, pre streaming bit, they do a little preview. Stream health was excellent, but it did drop for a minute for some reason. But uh, I may have kicked a cable. Who knows? Who knows indeed? And I've actually learned a bit more about OBS now. And uh, instead of losing my whole setup of scenes and stuff. I've managed to uh, find a way of saving them, which in the end seemed pretty obvious, but uh, at the time it didn't. So uh, hopefully I won't be losing those anymore. Still not quite figured out how the microphones work. It's got a, a, a really strange uh, way of turning those on and off. But uh, anyway, that's my problem, not yours. We should be talking woodwork. 
Oh, I've got another plane I could show you actually. This I was thinking of turning into a scrub plane, so if the wooden one doesn't work very well, I shall uh, do something to this one. Now, you may recognise this as being a very um, basic, I'm actually not quite sure the size, probably is. Yeah, it's smaller than number three, so I don't think it's as small as a two. It was a very basic plane, no idea where it came from, no idea who makes it. It has got Germany stamped in it though. And it's got a nice iron adjustment here, so for depth and lateral adjuster adjustment you've got two screws like a spoke shave. I think it's got a, it's got a thin blade in this, but I think with a thick blade, open the mouth out a bit, and it might make a quite passable scrub plane. But anyway, that's just uh, ideas. This bench in front of me has got all the the things that I'm supposed to have done different things with over the years, but I haven't got round to yet. So uh, if ever I need inspiration, I can just come here and try and finish one of those projects off. I'm sure we've all got things like that in our lives. I'm doing a bit of an impersonation tonight with my cardigan. I don't know if you can recognise that from anyone. Say no more. And at this at moment I suppose I should also do a shout out to Bench Talk 101. Join us all at uh, 8.30 tomorrow night for more woodworking talk. And Shreddy, it, it, it's some, yeah, GMT. Is somebody's doing a, um, a talk tomorrow, yeah, isn't it? So tomorrow we have Rusty, uh, who's one of our regulars on Bench Talk. Uh, and if you give me one moment, I will tell you what his talk is about. I, I know, it's, it's entitled A Tale of Two, t uh, two Chairs, I think. So that should be an interesting, um, probably hour of talking about chairs and uh, making chairs with lots of questions and then a lot of chat on woodworking. So Bench Talk 101, just check them out on Instagram, you'll find a link uh, a few minutes before 8.30 I think it comes up and you can join live on Zoom. Otherwise catch up on YouTube on their channel uh, a couple of days later I think. Yes, uh, you're absolutely right, Doctor. That is quite a knob on the front there. Makes me think... Uh, yeah, big old hands must have used that. Right, folks, I will call it there. Thank you, Shrenik, so much for your help this evening. Thank you, everyone who's turned up and uh, made this an enjoyable evening and hopefully you'll join me next time. Cheerio folks.